So guys, hi, how you doing? I just found out that I'm talking here for one hour and you all just see the black screen. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> totally, totally crazy. So there's no other way than starting again from scratch. Um, some, can someone in the chat please um, tell me if you can hear me and see me properly, if all is good? That would be really, really friendly. So I don't talk for one hour for nothing again. <laughs> so I think all is ready. You should be able to hear me. Let's make a short test for the music, if it's working. Yeah. You should have sound. So, I need to repeat right now one hour of stream. I think that's the bad thing about being a beginner streamer. I mean, I don't got yet proper lightning, all that kind of stuff, but uh, it will be much, much better in the future, I promise. I mean, I still get my German Dinglish accent. I cannot lose it because um, in Germany we got so a harsh accent. Talking German, I mean Sauerkraut und Bratkartoffel. Any kind of words, it's, it's so harsh um, compared to um, other languages. So yeah, I hope you are kind. And I'm gonna show you a little bit how I stem trailer music. And I got a project for you. It's a real life project a track I composed for Universal Music. And I'm gonna show you the process from start to, to the end uh, with stemming about for this track and how my client was asking in this part, uh, Universal Music um, for the stems, what bit rate, sample rate, and yeah. So let's move to Cubase. Just let's play the music a little bit so you can hear. Just let's make the screen a little bit bigger for you so I can hear and see what I did in my track for Universal. And yeah, let's play.
So, this was a track called... Let me check. I totally forgot the name after one hour. Hey, Michal. I saw you joined. How are you doing? So, this track was called um, Deadly Machine. It was written for Universal Music. You see, I only used audios. So, that's not stuff I already stamped out. It's um, audio imported and I arranged it to a track. Basically, it's stuff I recorded by myself, like clocks, prams are from sample tracks. Then we got benders from sample tracks. I got razor from Zerum. I already stamped out before. So I arranged, uh, rearranged um, stuff from single SFX I did before into a full track. Okay, so some if it's um, sound design stuff, it's um, my way of working with uh, mostly just with um, wave files. So don't be confused. Sometimes I even use MIDI. And Miral, just to tell you, this small class is full of vodka. It isn't. It's just water, unfortunately. But if I would have maybe a session full of vodka, that would be much more funnier than <laughs> I can imagine. Okay. So yeah. We are so funny, the Germans, you know them? We do funny jokes. We go one etage deeper to, to do some smiling and laughing, you know? No, it's just joking, just joking. <laughs> so, what I did here, you see, I got folders already. Why I got folders already, like this one. Let's make it a little bit bigger so I can see it much better in small evolution. So, I prepped um, already folders called hits fx tonal fx voices midis please ignore right now here the midis we don't need it let's take it out uh, because uh, later i solo those folders and stem it into stems so basically the folder called hits will be later a stem called hits so it's a kind of working process that works really in each DAW. It works in Cubase. You can generate folders. It works in Logic. It works in FL Studio. It works in, hey, Chibi Composer. Yeah, finally it's working. How are you doing? So yeah, if you create folders that will be later your stems, it works in each DAW. So I organize like hits, booms into hits. I organize FX like ordinary FX like risers, clocks, heartbeat, crunch, mechanics into the folder FX. I organize really important tonal stuff into different folders than in the FX folder. If you got risers and boomers together with tonal stuff, that makes no sense to me at least. And I think to the trailer cutters as well. So I got here tonal FX like brams and alarms sounding like that. So my recommendation is do brams, pings, alarms definitely into a different folder than FX. Call it tonal FX, call it just brams, a folder with brams or a stem with brams. Maybe stem out into stems, just the alarms stuff, the ping stuff. Because you need to imagine um, the trailer cutter gonna use um, mostly in a trailer your drum stuff your hit stuff and the fx stuff and if you got um, tonal stuff already in there maybe he will refuse that stem because he don't want to use the tonal stuff he just want to use the drum and the fx stuff so just make sure that you got a separated stem called tonal fx or call it the stem brams alarms pings synths. then i got a different folder called voices it's just stuff I think I recorded by myself with a microphone. That's a good option for you to beef up your track with your own voice. You don't need to recognize it in a mix that's your own voice. It just need to be in a background, like maybe in ambience or something. So the ear of your client or of the audience can hear always something different. Listen to that.
So basically, that's my voice. Just pitched high with a plugin called. Um, let me check. It's called Lil Alter Boy. And you can easily stretch, not stretch, a pitch your audio stuff without stretching it. So it's pitched, but it's not stretched, okay? Let's check. See, that would be already a great effect to write it into a track. Listen, the voice is deep, pitch it slowly up. It's better working downwards. Let's check again. That reminds me pretty much uh, on the movie It. I don't hope we get any clown here right now, but uh, maybe yeah, I'm that German clown, you know. I uh, know I'm not funny, so you don't need to, to smile about my my German jokes. Okay, so just a small trick. Let's put it out again. I'm sorry. So we got here the folder voices. So what I do right now, I got my channels in there, not depending if it's right now just audio. It could be MIDI, everything. But just organize your channels, like maybe you have um, hit channels, hit MIDI channels and drum kit channels like here. I got some MIDI. Look at this. It's called Epic Boom Kit from ADO Hybrid Tools 3. And stem it out. And that's easily done in each DAW you have like FL Audio or maybe Reaper. Just solo then your folder, export it. And now we got different options here in Cubase. You got the same in Logic and you got the same options in different DAWs. Make sure it's a WAV file or make sure it's a REFF file, AIFF file. My German accent, yeah, it's horrible, I know. The advantage of an AIFF file is that you can tag metadata later. So your publisher can put into it metadata like maybe saying it's a drum kit. Okay, so the trailer cutter can see that metadata in his system. Maybe he's searching for a church bell and he just types into his metadata system church bell and your trailer publisher put it, that metadata into that AEFF file. You cannot do it in a WAV file as far as I know it. So uh, some trailer libraries request WAV files. Not sure how they do it with metadata. Some libraries request AIFF files. Here we can write in metadata, metadata, but you don't need to do it um, as a composer. That's something your trailer library need to do later, okay? Make sure it's the right file type. Um, most libraries request 48,000 kilohertz, 24 bit. I know, for example, Warner Chapel is requesting 16 bit, I think. Hey Chester, how you doing? And some libraries even prefer 30, 40, 40 point 100 kilohertz. So before you stem out, make sure you got the right settings your trailer library is requesting, okay? Because otherwise it could easily happen that you have to stem out everything again. And the strange thing with cube is 10.5 is if I change here to 48, it's not showing it up. So I need to close it. I think it's kind of a bug maybe. No one really saw yet maybe okay just make sure you got the right settings here to wave 48 kilos 24 bit in cubase some libraries request interleaf stereo files if you get a request like this it's a left right channel okay in germany that's right now called l links rechts kanäle in english it's called left right channel i can only cover right now English and German. Maybe sometimes I gotta learn a little bit more Japanese or something so I can translate it in each language. But yeah, it would take a little bit longer. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Hi Sinister, how are you doing? So, so interleaved means you need to put that 
button here to left right channel. I don't have it so much. It's mostly done if you get it later done in Pro Tools because if you import Cubase or Logic files not exported interleaved, it will show up, one stereo file will show up in Pro Tools as two different mono files. I think it's like that. And But if you push that button here to interleaved left right channel, it shows up in Pro Tools as one stereo file. I didn't check that because Pro Tools is not properly working on my PC. I'm working not on a Mac, I'm working on a PC. And it has a horrible performance here. So just make sure you got the right settings here. That's really, really important. Also make sure everything you stem has the same length, okay? So just put your locator on top here. It's the same in each W. That's now just a loop, you see. That color is a loop. That's not really important. Let's just loop it so you can see it much better. Just make sure that your locator, the beginning, and the end of the locator is um, set up rightly, okay? Because otherwise, if the locator would be at that point, it would just stem out that part of the track, so the half of the track. So it would play this. And that's it. It wouldn't stem the full track, okay? So that's really, really something you need to set up at the beginning before stemming maybe your locator is set up widely. One other thing I forgot to mention is, you can see here that the music is playing, starting directly, okay, at second zero. You see that? If you stem it out like this and you play it back, you get directly a click, okay? And that's pretty, pretty horrible. It, I mean, I just realized some libraries really don't care about that. They send it to a mastering engineer and he's mastering that track like this. And it's starting, it's playing, and you hear directly a click. So just make sure you um, mark everything. And I go now to my setup here in Cubase. It's one slash eight. And I put everything 0 0.25 seconds forwards. Okay. So it's not starting direct with click one. You can hear it on right now, check. It's just starting 0 0.25 seconds later. This avoid clicks later, okay? And just make sure that if the end of the track is ending, the reverb fade out. you still got 0 0.2, 0 0.25 seconds emptiness in the track. So that's nothing playing. So if you export that, or maybe you play it later on Spotify, this makes sure that nothing is clicking because um, the track is starting directly with second 0 0.00. And at the end, you still got a little bit of uh, emptiness, okay? nothing going on there. So just make sure lo your locator is set it up correctly to the start and the end of the track. Just make sure you don't start directly with your music. You got a little bit of emptiness at the beginning. You see, starting here. And that's um, 0 0.25 seconds. And you got a little bit of emptiness at the end in which nothing is playing, no reverb, fade out, nothing. So it's just empty here, okay? Perfect. I'm talking and talking and talking. Just ask me some questions if the chat is something is not really clear. I just think, I just explain it how I always do it. Maybe I'm a little bit too fast or I'm too slow. Just tell it to me. So let's start with the stemming process. Okay, we go to export, audio mix down, make sure it's the right file. Here's WAVE or REFF. Make sure it has a sample rate your client is asking for, your trailer library. It has the correct bit size, like 24, some like 
16 bits. Yeah, and make sure it's stereo. In Cubase, it's directly stereo. You need to choose if it's mono, but it makes no sense to stem stems into mono because your whole track is in stereo. So having mono files makes no sense here. Okay, so you can see. Let's close that. I just solo my folder, which will be later my stem hits. And I got all my hits in there. So I have my locator at the right start and ending position. I got my whole track in the right starting and ending position. So it's not directly starting. It's just starting after 0.25 seconds. And at the end, I have some empty space. So I solo my folder, which you can do in each DAW. I could show you the setup with render and place in Cubase, but it's just something someone has in Cubase and I really don't like it with stemming. So I choose my path here called just a test path. Okay. I'm stemming out, let's say right now, the drum kit. And I called it drum kit and the track name deranged. Everything is set up. And I'm going to export that right now. I need to overwrite that because I already stemmed it before. In that one hour, I talked to myself on Twitch because we had a black screen all the time. So, and no one told me. I get you. So I stem it out. It takes now nine seconds. You can read it here. And that means that your CPU power is pretty powerful because if this is taking so long as your track is like maybe two minutes, you've got a really slow CPU and you should think about it to upgrade your CPU. If you're a Mac user, maybe you need to buy a pretty new Mac. <laughs> pretty expensive. If you're a PC user, maybe you can just change your CPU, okay? But that's another thing. So I solo my folder hits. Stem that out as a stem called hits. Track name deranged and it's wave. Overwrite it. Hi people, is someone there? How are you doing? All fine. I just see five people join my one of my first Twitch videos. So um, I'm just that unprofessional beginner Twitcher, but I show you my kind of standing process right now. Let's stem FX. I mean, that takes some time, okay? It's not a stemming process you can do with one click, but I really prefer this one. Um, simply because I know I soloed my folder, my stem by myself. I know it's just stemming that folder. It's not render and place something else maybe. So this could avoid um, issues and errors later in your stemming process you got. And I don't trust simply the render and place function in Cubase um, for stemming out stems. I do that in stemming out single channels, but it's something I can tell you later. Okay, we go with FX here. Now I'm just watching the box with plugins, okay? Now imagine you got output here, like maybe an output analog reverb, or maybe in synth, or maybe a compressor or something. Then you need to export in real time, which means each stem takes to export as long as your track is. Three minutes, that takes a whole long time. So I really prefer to work uh, just with plugins. I know that uh, analog gear stuff should be much better, but for me, it's still like a rumor, I think. It's just like, okay, that reverb is so great, and that reverb is so bad, like your plugin reverb. I think it's, I mean, it's sounding different, but you can, nowadays you can simulate it with um, plugin reverbs perfectly or compress or something. So we're stemming out now tonal FX, which means that's bramps, pings, alarm sounds, and it's not in the FX folder. Make sure your tonal FX like prams is not in the FX stem. It's really important because your trailer cutter 
wants fx just to have regular way of x like risers and downers, the kind of stuff. If he gets into that stem like an alarm sound, maybe he refused the complete track later. And you don't get a placement. You don't get money. So you didn't did the right job and you can go to your old factory and maybe yeah, assembling cool German cars like Mercedes or something. Yeah. I need to override it again because I stamped it before and it's in the same folder. So don't get confused by that. I need to say I really enjoyed it talking to you on Twitch. It's like giving a little bit back to people which don't know yet how to do that. And it's a so easy setup. And I'm working as a music supervisor for an LA um, trailer and production music library. I got my own label called Audio Tech for Trailer Music starting right now. And I get files. And I really need to say most 90% of the people do it really wrong. We send out PDFs explaining how you stem. And it's so annoying as a music supervisor and as a trailer library when you get files back that are not as I described it in a PDF. So that means for me as a music supervisor means that for me like uh, Hi Anna, wie geht's so? Alles gut? Just a friend of mine is here in Germany. So we talk maybe a little bit of German. Yeah. So it's really annoying as a trailer library to get files back that are really wrong. Because um, imagine you need to check each file as a music supervisor, maybe an assistant or someone. And it takes so much time to check that stuff. And if it's not uh, stamped out properly, taking so much time, we got emails to write, we got to explain. So that's why we set up everything in PDF, explaining as much as possible. And so I really need to just come back, um, just read the PDFs or get the information by your music supervisor from your trailer library, if you don't get a PDF, how to stem it because it takes time and you don't want to do it twice. Okay, it's simply time you could make money in. Okay, I stop talking and stem out voices. Hey Anna, wie geht's? Ich hab gehört, du, du twitchst jetzt auch. <laughs> Videospiele, muss ich mir angucken. Very interesting, Anna. Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking for a different microphone maybe for streaming and a better lightning setup. And yeah, that's something I want to do for the future. But I hope it's still good enough for the moment. So what did we do right now? We put um, everything we got organized into folders already before stemming. Drum kit is just only one channel right now because I got only one um, channel for that. I got no, not different drum kits, okay? I got only one drum kit. We got a folder hits. We got a folder FX, tonal FX was. We stamped it out. We have set up the locator properly to the right length of the track. It's not ending in the middle of the track. It's not ending like this. I see that so many times, like two minutes after the track. So set it up rightly. Please do it, okay? Please the composers I work with. Please, please do it properly. <laughs> Otherwise, it's really so time assuming to tell you how to do it. So that's why I'm sending out PDFs to you. Please read it, read it. Even if it's just one letter, read it, please. Okay, so we stamped out everything. We're gonna close the project right now because we don't need it anymore. And then we set up an empty Let's do it different. I already, already prepped that before. Not that we get any problems with the restream here and you, and you can't hear anything. So let's check. I got here empty Cubase setup, you see. I just need to put on the master booth uh, plugin called restream so I can make sure that you can hear my, um, my uh, Cubase stream here. So let's start an empty session. Let's say it's empty. It's not empty right now. OK. 
Okay, I moved it up wrong into another folder. So just let put the stamps now to the side for a little bit. Hey, hi, Bieber, was geht? Alles klar. German guys here. <laughs> yeah. So this is my empty setup I start for each track. I got already folders in, like hits, and empty audio channels for that. Sometimes I even got already um, some reverbs on it, okay? I use it all the time. I got already an audio folder with audio channels in for FX. Then I got one instance of contact with 16 channels, a second one, a third one. I need to say, usually I just need 16 channels of MIDI or maybe 20 or 25. I never used 50 or 100 channels. I think it's just about putting so much instruments in to making sure that it sounds good. I mean, you, you really don't need 500 different instruments for that. I like minimalism. So I just got um, three different instances of contact here. Each has 16 channels. Get a folder of my go to usual synths. You can see here, Pet Shop, Epson, Razer, Repro, Dark Sepo. I got uh, the Eduard Terry London libraries because those are really unique. I cannot put it into other folders. It's like flutes, like medieval stuff, like dark, evil, wicking stuff. And I got one folder, audio recording, where I got my setup already in for my microphone. If I want to record in a track my voice with a bearing or one, or maybe when the two road stereo microphones I got in my corner there. So that's just my usual setup. I already got here on the right side contact activated I got everything else deactivated I just got one instant of contact activated because when I need something like let's say I need one instant of repo I activate it and you see the CPU is um, pulling up there so I just make sure I just got the stuff I need in my setup right now and I usually start with um, contact on this yeah so but we're speaking to we're speaking today about stamps okay so let's put only the stamps in there. Let's put everything beside so you can see only stamps. Let's take that up. So you don't see it. It's only stamps I got here. So those are the stamps I stamped out before in a different project, but you can see it has all the same length right now. And it's all, each stem is one wave stereo file. Let's play it back a little bit, like just the drums and the hits, okay? So just to be clear, it's all wave files. You can see two channels here, left and right. Each stem is one wave file. So for me, that's a perfect base. Sometimes even to remix the track, I just could put out parts of it aligned to the grid, put it to the beginning, put it to the end, maybe re remixing audio with different kind of plugins, like let's say voices, okay? Let's listen to the voices. Could use now a pitching plugin and just use it on a channel. You don't have much CPU power gaining anymore here because you have only audio channels so you get maybe much much more cpu power to use now cpu hungry plugins like maybe sound toy stuff like little alter boy or something so we get a session here with stems okay those are all the stems i exported before just to be sure and make it clear so i played it back that you can listen to it that's the same track as before and I got some minutes empty just to brief right now. I'm not talking so much. Oh, sorry.
So let's make that a little bit shorter. We don't need to listen to the full track. So again, just to make sure that the stems I stemmed out before in my project was MIDI or audio, not depending. And got those imported into a new project. And now I just got the wave files here. So I can check about maybe reverb fades or something. So really important, make, make you sure that you don't get any clicks. I'll show it to you again how it sounds. If you got clicks in your project, how that sound? Oh, this is sounding, sounds. Don't ask me. You hear? It's clearly a click. And I can tell you, it's nothing more annoying as a trailer cutter to have clicks on your stems. Just make sure you really don't have clicks or pops or anything there, okay? Because it really doesn't look professional. And the trailer cutter might refuse your track to use in a trailer because it's simply not AAA Hollywood sound with a click. Or maybe you got clocks in, then it's from the sound, you know, but that's not that thing. So we got stems here. What are we doing right now? We stem out alt versions, which mean full drum synth of X, no, as if X stuff, maybe it's just an underscore one. So we got the stems here and I export my alt versions from the stems, audio stems. Why am I doing this? Well, uh, I imported the stems I stemmed before and we listen to the whole track again if I got some clicks in there. Sometimes I even solo the stems, listen to them soloed. So if I don't got clicks here in the stems, I don't got clicks in the alt versions. It's a simple strategy. It takes more time, but it makes sure that your clients got uh, properly done stems here, okay? So it's just another kind of process, making sure all stems are clean. So what are we doing right now? Okay, we got here, let's say an alt folder. Let me stem out track Deadly Machine. Main version, everything, nothing muted. Shuk Wu Fu 87 is asking, is this your workflow having all tracks in Quake? Yeah, honestly it is. I really don't waste time to color tracks because it sounds the same if it's gray or if it's yellow or blue. I know some people can work better with having uh, channels and groups colored because you can clearly see more differences in your window but i got a 4k screen here so i got a really high high resolution so i can really see everything and i'm just used to gray so it's just uh, a thing that it's wasting time for me to color everything in different colors uh, you know it sums up if you got 10 tracks to write a week or maybe four just four and you got to color everything each four minutes is again five or 10 or 15 minutes. You're wasting time. That's making that the track sounding better. It's just looking better. You know, it's nothing that um, I need at this point. I mean, it would make sense for other people having problems organizing the tracks. So then you can color that, but I'm fine with that right now. That's my workflow. It really is, you can believe me. So we got stamped out the main version from all stems here. Then what you definitely need to stem for trailers is a version with only drums and FX. And really make sure you don't got any tonal stuff in there. No prams, no pings, no screams, anything, you know. That's the version that most of the trailer cutters going to use for a trailer. It's just drum stuff and SFX stuff. And it's really, really good stuff usual. You can even publish it as a known track. Just listen just to the drums on FX, how it's sounding. You can, you can see right now and here, I could show you different trailers that just using drums and SFX. And if you got this version already stamped, you've got a proper setup for this.
and to 99.99% your trailer library is going to ask you for a Trumps FX version. Okay, let's solo them, Trumps and FX, because I got everything already in folders, so it's easy. I don't need to solo this channel, this channel, this channel, this channel, and this. It takes simply more time. Everything is here set up for a faster stemming process. Okay, let's choose both. And let's call it Deadly Machine. Trumps, now important. Don't use this one for an end. Don't use a percent sign. Just name it drums fx or do a lowercase fx because usually those marks generate really problems in uh, uploading files into search audio into sub-publisher systems and your music supervisor is really annoyed by renaming this stuff okay it just takes more time and i think everybody should work so that uh, your clients and your friends and your music supervisors has as much as less work not as much work as less work as you can give them okay so let's call that trumps fx without lowercase and stem it. Then you get a version only with your drums and FX there. So we get a version with drums and FX. So what would be a possible alt version? Let's check that. We got clucks. You see, we got clucks here in there. If you got something like this, stem out a version without clucks. Because it's simply clock is not an instrument, but it's a kind of SFX that's extremely in front of a mix usually. And it makes sense to put it out in an alt version. Call it no clock. You just need to put yourself or learn to put yourself into a position that you can think like a trailer editor or maybe think like your music supervisor, you know. And this definitely gonna help to getting you more placements on a long one. I mean, it's just a process taking five seconds, but it could mean you get maybe 20 grand or maybe 50 grand or just maybe 5k of money for that version you already stamped out and your trailer cutter didn't have to make the version. So what kind of version? Um, maybe a version without drums and hits makes sense. So it's something like an underscore version. Let's listen to that. Let's go to the part where usually you should be the drums. Sorry. I need to take care that I'm not killing myself here with a microphone. Next time I get a microphone with an angle from from the, from the top, you know. So let's start again. So. Um, having a version without trumps and hits makes definitely sense because um, trumps and FX, FX are also really in front of the track. And that's then some kind of more underscore version. Just check with out. With.
So make sure you get a version without drums and hits. Okay, that's why I have in a drums folder already hits and a drum kit, so I can mute them both and I got my version. So the folders are uh, separated that I can do my alt versions directly by one click. Just drums fx, two clicks, okay, and like this. So we got the full version, drums fx version, we got the version uh, without drums and hits. I don't stem it right now because, uh, yeah, you heard it before. We got strings in there, we got voices in there. Maybe doing also a version without strings, depending on the strings. Would make sense and you can hear it. You can hear it here. The stem alone is not clicking. I did a fade that is not clicking. You see it's a properly fade here. That's really really important. Again, not to get clicked um, alt versions or stems by someone. So what we did right now, we stemmed out stems, we imported it into a new project. We did alt versions out of those stems we exported because we checked the stems before, it's not clicking, popping, crackling anything. So logical wise, your full and alt versions are also not clicking and popping because it's coming from the search, from the stems and it's clear already. If you do it with MIDI, I would be careful because I know that some plugins generate really clicks and pops like crazy. I have that problem also all the time with Omnisphere. So I really take care about um, Omnisphere stems. I even got a plugin sometimes on my single bus stand for an instrument called, um, it's from Isotope RX, they click called. So if you don't want to fade something, you simply could put that plugin called Eric's They Click. It's from a bundle called Restoration Bundle. I think you can get it pretty cheap for a few bucks with Isotope. And yeah, so we see here if we got any clicks. Let's check it. Let's check it. So. That's showing up right now have 86 clicks. That makes no sense. But usually it works and it's um, basically that plugin is doing nothing else than putting your music. It's checking your music before you listen to it for clicks and mutes it before you can hear it. And if you stem it, it's muting those clicks. Just see, let's say I don't get a plugin on my channel. The music starts directly when I hit the button to play. You see, if I put that plugin on my channel, I want to de-click, I won't have any kind of clicks in. It's taking a little bit longer because it's pre-listening to your track here. I'm muting that few milliseconds or seconds. I'm muting the clicks. You see? I put the button, I push the key now. And it's taking much longer to, much longer to start a track because that plugin is pre-listening to your channel and fixing all the clicks. But you need to be careful with the plugin. If you got high frequencies in a channel, like maybe high synths, it detected it as a click and that's not right. And it's changing the sound of the channel. So I would assume it's only good for SFX stuff. Okay. Not for instruments or something. Okay. Let's put it out. What's just a small tip. Hey, yeah, BLC. Yeah. Long, long time no stream. That's right. Yeah. I didn't find out how to set up uh, the stream properly, but I uh, found now over Alex Pfeffer's channel, the plugin called Via Stream. If you put that on your master bus, you get a stereo output of your Cubase and you can hear it directly. Chukwu187. Yeah, I don't got yet a DSR on my, on my setup, but let's check. 
I put it now in. Let's check if that's working. Maybe the DS is the less. Let's just do that for a second, just taking a second. I just hope the stream doesn't stop right now. Can you still hear me? Maybe the S stuff is now much less than before, but uh, I need to check out how to set up that properly. I can put up here plugins for my microphone and basically de-S it before, but yeah, I hope it's not so, so harsh at the moment. So yeah, we did different um, kind of alt versions here, stamped it out. Um, what's usually also requested are um, 60, 30, 15 seconds. And it's perfect to do that with stems. So I changed my Cubase from bars to seconds. And then I set my locator to one minute. And the perfect thing here is I can see the waveforms. So I can see where do I want to have started my 60 second version. Usually it starts in the middle or something. You see, so I can move that. I see here, here's something big going on. So I can move that to a part that's working. Let's just move that a little bit more, probably like this. And usually it starts, each um, version starts with a hit. And this should be, it started. See, it clicked, so I need to make sure. Here's like a small fade before the hit sets in. I also would recommend to put the 60, 30, 15 second version 0.5 seconds forward, so it's not clicking. You see, here's a little bit of, no, it's now one bar, that's too much. So let's check again. See, we got a little bit kind of emptiness here, so it's not clicking. Perfect. So it starts properly, the one minute version, and we just need to end it right now. Perfectly. I just do it right now for the one minute version, but uh, it should just show that you can do that easily with the stems. You could even mute something here if it's not fitting in the in the 60 second version or other version. You see, I got here a hit. And usually your version starts and ends with something like this, with something prominent in front. It's a hit. And I'm gonna mute everything else after that. So I Move now everything a little bit behind that hit. I don't move that, I just make it shorter. You see, because if I, if I would move that, it would sound strange. You see, I just let it end here. Make a small fade with those files, because otherwise it's clicking again, and we won't have to do it like that. Let's just play it. Perfect. So we got a perfect one minute version for that. And it's just going easier with stems for me. I don't like to do it in, in a MIDI session because you need to mute each MIDI then. And maybe your note is not really on the quit on bar one or something. So you need to check each MIDI channel if it's working properly. So that's just an easier version for me to do 60, 30 and 15 seconds versions. So yeah, let's say we want to have 15 seconds. So we put the locator to 15 seconds here. Just check sometimes in your window below if it's really 15 seconds. Go to one, it starts with zero. Go to two, it ends with 15. So you can check that perfectly. 
So doing a 15 second version is usually just a part of the final climax and then it ends with a hit. Let's do that maybe right now. We see here is the final ending of the climax. So we just take a part out here. And it should start with a hit. And hit is below here. That's maybe a little bit too short. So we see here starts the hit. Let's see here is something ending. We go again to the beginning. It's already faded because we did it with a 60 second version. And what I do now, I just take the hits and move the other channels a little bit forward. Uh, not the hit because it should fade in alone and move that forward to the point where that hit is setting in. If I would play it like that, listen to it. You got already some sounds in there from your tech with the hit is playing. Okay, and I just want to have the hit whooshing in alone and then get all the other sounds. You see? And then I move again everything forward to the point 0 0.25 seconds to avoid clicking when something is playing. You see, it's now located here. And the second the part where it's starting is 0 0.25. And you can see it here again. So let's play it like this just with the whoosh fade in and then playing the music. Really good. I know you really can call it music. I mean, it's more, not much musical going on here, but if I would do it like that, you can see it. The whoosh hit is fading in and here you've got other sounds already in like that of X downer. We don't want to have a downer at the start of a 15 second version. Maybe that's working sometimes, but it's just sounding strange. Just let play it like this. So it's definitely cleaner to have just your whoosh hit coming in. And you see here, if I make it bigger, here is the final, the biggest peak of the hit where it's hitting. And here I set all the other stems to that point to appropriate fate. Eric Jakobson, thanks for doing this. Thank you for joining. I'm dropping out every now and then. Can everybody approve this? Just let me write in the chat a second. Okay, Eric, maybe just check your setup. Maybe too much is going on on your PC. Maybe you got a bad internet connection because um, maybe it's me. I need to check that. Maybe I got a too high resolution, but I'm streaming in um, 1000, how it's called? It's in HD. I'm streaming HD. It should be fine. So, but if it's me, uh, just tell it to me, okay? Chukwu said it's not for him, so yeah. One zero eight zero point, yeah. You are the movie guy, you know how to call it. It's HD, yeah, working fine here. Okay, then it should be Eric's issue at that point. So you see, it all takes time. That's right. But in my opinion, you, you don't got a different option to do it. You can do that in MIDI, but you cannot make sure with MIDI that everything is clear, not clicking. You know, MIDI is sometimes strange. It it's, takes much, much more CPU power and RAM power and other stuff than only single audio files. So it's just 
more a safer way to me. Not everybody need to do it. I just do it like that. A safer way to me to print stamps and just to make sure it's really clear. It's nothing clicking. It's not coming an issue from Omnisphere or a different plugin. I don't want to bash right now Omnisphere. Maybe I got a bad setup with Omnisphere or something. It's just on my side of things. But yeah, you see, you can do easily with stamps different kind of versions, especially the 15, 30 second version. Sometimes you can do a one minute version out of the full version. But you see, I use a simple trick here. I just put everything a quarter second forward. So it's not clicking because if you play it directly at the beginning without any empty space here, it can really click. It's just too fast something going on for some kind of setups. And I know to 100% if you got music tracks in Spotify or maybe Amazon Music and you got it in MP3, MP3 is clicking directly if you start your music by zero. So that's not really good for the listeners to enjoy your music. So just put everything a little bit forward here. Okay, it's just a small step. So I just moved, I didn't move, I just moved forward that kind of noise to the point where that hit is hitting in and then you don't recognize it. It would just sound like, just let it play alone. It, alone. It just sound like audio issues or noise behind it. You see, it's starting with a drop down and I really don't want to have that in a 50 second version at the start. I really prefer versions with the clean whoosh shit coming in. You see, and having the same at the end of the 15 second version. Just to make sure in Cubis you can hit the um, number two and you are at the end of 50 second. And then you need, surely you need to do the same at the end of the 50 seconds. So I move everything here to 50 seconds. You see, it's ending, the locator's ending in 50 seconds. And then I take care for the hit. The hit should play here. Do I got any hit here? I got here a hit right now at, you see here the maximum peak of the hit at second. 30 and a half, maybe. And if I make it bigger, you see here the hit, maximum peak. You only can see that in wave files. You cannot see that in MIDI, so it's another advantage of that. And here where the maximum peak is, I set my line and move everything, excluding that hit, to that point. Okay, it's moving now, the hit again. And I move that forward to the point. You see, we got here 15 seconds and I just make sure that I got 0 0.5, 0 0.25 seconds, horrible word called emptiness. So I move the part of the hit to 14.75. So I got again here a little bit, a quarter second emptiness. You see the hit is then playing alone. Oh, I got a fade one. Surely I need to make the fade uh, the maximum peak of the hit. And then definitely I need to fade. Oh, everything else is already faded because I faded it already in the 60 versions. And I just, just to show it to you, I didn't move the stems. I just made it shorter or longer appropriate to the kind of second version I need here. Okay, I think that should be for my first kind of stream. Let's check some questions. Yeah, Chukwu, I need to fix that issue with a DSer maybe. Maybe it's a little bit better right now. I just put a DSer on my input from my microphone, but I got a Behringer, Behringer B1 and it's pretty, pretty harsh. I definitely need to check. I definitely need to check uh, for a different streaming microphone 
uh, with pre-built in DSA, noise gate, that kind of thing. I'm gonna buy that. Ah, oh, it's better. Perfect. So let's check some questions. DSA we got. Thank you, Eric Jakobsen. So just check why we have dropouts on your side of things. Pixely is asking, do you print your stamp one by one or you have a special template you would all your since TikTok ready uh, to print all at once? No, I definitely prefer to print stamps one by one. But as you can see here, I got already folders for my stamps. So I don't solo single channels and stem it then. I simply got my folders where my white channels are in and then I solo the channel and stem it. So it's just a way I can make sure I really just got that stuff in tonal stuff in this part, tonal stuff in my folder, you know. If I stem it out, let's say with Cubase render in place, or maybe I got a routing setup, maybe something is messing up and it just takes too much time. I know it exists some um, templates that are extremely good routed to have it by one click, um, but I really don't have time at the moment to figure that out. And I just have the feeling that this kind of setup is for myself safer. So I always can make sure uh, stems I deliver to my clients are really, 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 really safe in here. Okay, let's mute it. So, yeah, so that's just my way of working. So I'm not printing all stems with one push button, button push. I just solo my pre-made folders and stem then that folder, including those channels in it, yeah. Sinister is asking, how can you donate? Oh, I was never get asked to donate, but I just can send you my PayPal address. I just need to set it up here on Twitch, but I just need uh, many more streams and many more followers for that, so I can uh, include the donate pedal, uh, button. But if you want to donate something to my PayPal, it's this one. Or just let me for my PayPal me address, Just a second, guys. Just let's check if it's working. No. Just see. That's my paper. If you want to donate something, you don't need to. I mean, I don't have yet a professional stream, but I'm still learning and I hope I get it done much better with better lightning, with a better microphone. So I need to invest in um, more stuff. So, so guys, if you got any more questions about stems, just ask me. You see, I work totally with wave uh, files here because I can much better see what's going on in the music. I see maximum peaks of the hits where I need to align that kind of stuff, you know, and yeah. So guys, just let me know if you got any more questions. I stay a little bit here. Just checking the setup. Just checking that in-screen chat I just put a little bit more up so it's better to see so yeah people let me know if you got any more questions about the stamps maybe you, you just joined right now and I still can explain a little bit so just let me know
I just play you some proper kind of music in the background. Let's see what we got new here. I got a pretty, pretty new track called Wonder of Life, I record with Life Orchestra. So I'll just let it play a little bit in the background. So GW Composers asking, how long does it typically take you to write a track? I mean, there's no easy solution to answer that. Okay, it's really depending. I mean, I'm, I'm really used to do sound design tracks. So I do that really for a living. I do that almost every day or better, I did it every day. And nowadays not anymore so much, but it takes me for a sound design track two minutes, sometimes just a session of four hours. And sometimes maybe it's a session of two days. So I separate I separate my sessions into four hours, uh, four hours usually. So I try to get done a track by, by four hours. And if it's not working, I work the next day again in four hours. But it's just for sound design. So if you do that for maybe orchestral stuff, it's impossible to finish that in four hours, I would say. Because you got so much to write. So yeah, guys, just let me know if you got any more questions and I stay a little bit more here. I bought a track in the background. It's called Wonder of Life, fully recorded with the Budapest Symphonic Orchestra. No, Sofia Symphonic Orchestra, I'm sorry, with George Stresov and um, Mara Saltwig, full orchestra. I got some other people working on. And yeah, so that will be my next single releasing in fall because it's a really, really special project to me. Chukwu187 is asking, what's your musical background? Yeah, so basically I come from classical music. Uh, let's go to the camera here. Um, I played piano really, really early. I started with an age of six with classical piano. I had a private teacher for that uh, from six to 16, 10 years. And I had in middle school already something like uh, a small kind of music school, learning notation, reading notes, that kind of stuff. And so I had a classical background in classical piano music, but also in theory like uh, what are harmonies, uh, tonal scales, you know, like all that kind of stuff, like fists, gistes, eyes, a's, how to notate something. We had to play flute in middle school and play that, playing that um, by notes, by score already. So a lot of people in Germany have a musical background already in the middle school, maybe um, going higher classes and yeah. So I just did classical music till I was maybe 14 or 15, but I always developed in between own tracks. And one day uh, my music teacher told me, man, that track is really sounding pretty, pretty good. I think I still have that somewhere on a CD from nowadays, I'm gonna show you. And it was one of my first um, compositions. And my music teacher did something like, uh, how was it called? like a concert of all his um, of all his people he's teaching. And I played that um, track on this concert with all the other guys behind me. And one older man came to me and said to me, yeah, I think we need to work on your career as a composer. And I was maybe 13, 14, maybe 15 something. So that was something like my first start. I reached an audience. Then I got a pretty weird way. I was in a German boy group called Boys Alive. I just was on a, a pretty big concert 
it's like a school's out concert when all the holidays setting in the school is finished you know and you join other groups like no plan maybe Hathaway was there playing then who was playing there a lot of famous people and I was there as someone joining the audience and there was a company coming to me and said hey you're looking pretty good like and you could join a boy group we're doing a casting for a boy group so I was confused and I had the advantage that I already played music I said yeah maybe I'm coming uh, yeah I was there with my girlfriend and I was like what the girls are looking at me I didn't recognize it as a true something like a weird for me I didn't recognize it you know now what I'm married so it's different I don't care anymore about it <laughs> hi Mila love you yeah so I went to that casting and I joined after three months then a boy group singing nowadays I was singing I mean I'm not the perfect singer but it's good enough for a boy group maybe I'm not a classical singer but yeah then I was um, we was recording tracks in a big studio we had uh, some writers writing for us tracks then I was on tour in completely Germany doing concerts in each almost each city in Germany on each l land area you know in East Germany in West in the North and the South so we was some kind of in a touring bus something and I joined the music industry with 16 it was a really great experience for me but also a little bit kind of weird experience because it was the millennium age around 2000s and everything was a little bit trashy I mean if you listen to music to those times it was really really a little bit trashy yeah so to make it short I was in a boy group till 19 even did a video shot in Los Angeles with a company uh, which did also music videos for Madonna so it was a pretty um, com uh, publishing company spending a lot of money in us and with 19 I didn't have any more fun on this so I left the boy group and did German pop music uh, in a group called Zeitlos with another guy called Michael Müller and we were singing German tracks we wrote our own tracks in German and at those times German singing was not really famous in Germany like it is today maybe but it was the wrong time and I did that till 25 and then I had the feeling to set up my own studio I always was in studios when I worked in that boy group or you know but I had the, the kind of feeling I need to set up my own studio so I did with a small laptop with a small Audi interface nothing big fancy with two DJ m monitors maybe spending 100 bucks for this so I didn't have much money I was a student I studied um, mechanical engineering at this time and yeah so I was teaching myself to do kind of production music it was instrumental music and then weird wise I stopped doing music for five years till I was 30 I didn't have any inspiration nothing to do music so I totally stopped I didn't have the a studio because I wasn't anyhow inspired by something and then with 30 I had something like the clash in my head I said okay why don't you have a studio anymore so I built again my own studio and did what I could do really good so I wrote solo piano pieces and uploaded it uh, to SoundCloud to YouTube all that social media I didn't had with 20 maybe I had something like MySpace I'm not sure someone of you reminds that kind of stuff yeah uh, Chukwu187 this group let me check yeah <laughs> yeah guys that's me singing and dancing in front of the group with that strange blonde here cuddled up like crazy yeah so I did my own studio and just spent time on producing production music I didn't know that it was production music but I just did it did classical piano music and then I wrote a track called Morpheus and a Dream with the singer uh, Felicia Ferreira she's pretty famous today singing for Two Steps from Hell and other people but she wasn't so famous in 2013 and she reached out to me because of SoundCloud uh, listening to my tracks and said yeah that's pretty good let's do something together and so we composed a track called Morpheus in a Dream 
and that track catched up by a newspaper online called Soundtracks and Trailer Music and it did an article about it and wrote about it and so some people uh, found me on the internet about uh, that track and someone called okay that sounds a little better like epic and Trailer Music and so I came into that that this uh, genre of um, yeah of production music with the track uh, Morpheus in a Dream. Then I get hired by another label we called Those Brains. Those was the first people uh, getting me into contract for trailer music. A friend of mine showed me before in a car trailer music. It was two steps from hell and I never heard before about about them. I was 25 maybe. I said, oh, that's that's nice. And so then I realized it's something like not in the quality of two steps from hell, but something in the same area of two steps from hell. Yeah. Then to make it really, really, really short, um, I got hired by many other libraries. I mean, I had my first placements with Willy Slow Motion with Sound Design Tracks again. And so I checked out that this is my my fourth. It's Sound Design Trailer music. It's not orchestral trailer music. And yeah, so I had my first placements in Spider-Man 2013. Really, really fast af after I started trailer music. And then in Robocop, all with Willy Slow Motion, a really, really great trailer library. Nowadays I work with, with Argus Gonzalez. Hey, Argus was really nice from you to get me into really slow motion. Yeah, and then some, that's how the industry is working. Other trailer libraries see that you got placements. And the simple mindset about that is that they want to hire you because you had placements. So they have a bigger chance to get placements with you. So it's not all that kind of, you are a nice guy and you are my friend. It's also some kind of business they want to make money with you but it's something we could talk about later about that business mindset up you can have in a trailer music area overall in a complete area so i got more placements last year i had maybe 20 placements and trailers but just because i have a lot of tracks out there now after doing that for seven years i did seven years nothing else than trailer music so i got a lot of tracks out there maybe something like 700 to 1000 so the chance to get license is much much bigger so I hope that answered your questions. Um, Chukwu187. So just let me know if you got any more questions, I'm gonna answer them. If not, I would leave because we are already, how long we are on air? One and a half hour. So just let me know. Yeah, Sinister, kind of sunny boy. Yeah, maybe it was kind of sunny boy. <laughs> Today I'm more like an old boy, you know, I'm 37. And yeah, much more settled than before in the boy group. Yeah, but it was a really, really great experience nowadays, I need to say. So, so much. We even had fans like crazy. Uh, I was receiving fan mail from them. I also received other things I don't want to mention right now, but it was something like underwear, you know. And yeah, <laughs> it was really, really, really great. I even had one crazy fan called, she called herself uh, Mishi's girl Steffi. It's real. She called herself Mishi's girl, Steffi. And one time I saw that girl in my city running around in my local town with a t-shirt with my head on that t-shirt. And I was like ashamed of that. I had to go away seeing it. I was like, okay, that's not real. So it's still kind of strange to me. Pixely is asking, what labels do you work with in terms of TV and trailer and how much percentage do you focus on each? Yeah, I just need to tell you, there's a different. It exists trailer libraries just doing music for trailers and it exists libraries doing all the music for television. But it also exists libraries doing both trailer and television. And usually those are the big ones like Universal, BMG, Warner Chapel. And I mostly work for them because you have the big advantage of that. You get your music into television for realities from your pro, like BMI, Gamer, CSEC, SACAM, anything performance-wide organization called. And you get still, they also do trailer things. So they get your music into television and into trailers. That's both different things. For television, you get royalties paid by your performance-wide organization called BMI, Gamer, anywhere else in the world. For syncs, which means synchronizations, you get sync payments. 
means if you got a track two minutes in a international trailer, you maybe get 50k or maybe 80k. I even heard something about 100k, but I never received such a big placement like that. But those numbers are possible. But honestly, um, the back end from realities can be much, much bigger than trailers. Just, uh, just imagine you got a TV spot world championship and that world championship in football is playing two months and repeating a TV spot worldwide. So you get that royalties from each country on the world where it's playing and it's repeating all the time. Let's say you get 30,000 times one euro. So you got already from that one TV spot 30,000 euro or 30,000 US bucks, you know, and you got you get then multiple TV spots and other kind of things. I had a TV spot and an Expedia uh, holiday TV spot uh, just in the EU, like uh, Great Britannia, like France, like Germany, like the Italy or something. And that paid out pretty well. And at that time, I uh, realized that royalties and TV stuff is really, really worth it to do. And I would recommend each trailer composer to definitely do also television music because today in Corona times, you wouldn't have any kind of income because the trailer industry is stopping right now, was slowly starting again. And there were no things for let's say three months. So from what kind of money do you want to live? You know? So, I mean, Corona is really um, a unique time. That won't happen that much but you definitely go better in both kind of ways in trailer and television stuff yeah let's check some other questions yeah so labels i work for are uh, the big ones are uh, using universal music bmg wanna chapel i work for a label in f french people called mima doing also pretty good they are not so big but they are big in, f in force french people so, yeah, I worked a lot for Evolving Sound. They are doing pretty good in things for trailers and also get your stuff over BMG to television. It's also good to check trailer libraries, how they are sub-published. If they are sub-published by a big main publisher like BMG, Universal, that means um, you get royalties from them in that country country where they are sub-published you know if let's say right now phantom power is sub-published by bmg worldwide excluding us you get royalties worldwide from bmg over your performance right organization so that definitely makes sense to check um trailer libraries which have really good sub-publishing deal and you can check that with google just type in music that's signed with a trailer library, you're gonna find it in different languages and see where, where they are published or just check on Universal what kind of labels they are publishing on BMG and so you can do a pretty good research on for who you should work. But it's not always that easy to get into those libraries because they can pick their people pretty easily because they know they perform pretty well. Um, while other libraries, smaller libraries cannot choose really or pick their composers because they are not so big or don't have so many placements. So, yeah. Hey, Piva38, nice you joined. So just for the people that joined a few minutes ago, I just explained, uh, explained how to make stamps, the whole stamp process. So I would uh, recommend to watch the video later on Twitch. I'm also going to try to upload it on YouTube. I just need to make sure if it's really recorded in a high quality right now. I'm still a beginner in streaming, but yeah, that's definitely something you can check in the future that we got those videos also up on YouTube. Yeah. So Piva38, anyone else? We got 12 people in the chat. Do you got any more questions relying to stamps or even to the music industry? Just let's do the just chat picture. Yeah, 
Um, streaming is definitely something I want to do more in the future. Hopefully with a better setup. Less essing sounds on my microphone. So I'm going to buy another microphone. Going to buy a um, lightning setup here. I got an HD webcam. But maybe I'm going to stream from a DSLR camera. Something. And yeah. Just let me know what you would like to see for a new stream. Write me on Facebook. Um, let me check for the i gonna you can see later on the ending screen all my social media stuff and let me just know what you would like to hear from me for the new stream so i'm gonna set it up pretty quickly cw composers asking once you were accepted into trailer libraries how long did it take to get your first placement after consistently writing it didn't took that long time i mean it really depends on your label you are published with. I mean, Willy Still Motion was really starting those days, 2013. I was one of the first 20 composer maybe working with them and it got an album out called Ejected One. You can check on Google or on other sites. Um, Ejected One was a sound design album and I just had, um, I was just was just pretty lucky that I did stuff that was appropriate right now to Robocop. So, uh, wrote a track called Silver Surfer. I just wrote it here, that you can check that. You can check Silver Surfer, Michael Mars on YouTube. So it was just like a damaged drum line advisor kind of stuff. So it was maybe three months after that album was published with Release the Motion. I got my first placement and I got directly two weeks or three weeks later, second placement on Robocop. So I was really, really lucky. I would say it's just having the right music at the right time with the right publisher and the right um, campaign. You know, it even could take 10 years. It's just kind of sure you need to have a appropriate quality of your music. But yeah, let me check other questions. I fear that some trailer publishers doesn't allow to sign with other publishers. Do you think it's better to avoid such companies? I mean, that deal you're pointing on is um, meaning being exclusive to a publisher. I need to check now what I say. But um, it means really you only can write for one for this one publisher. And in my solely alone opinion, that means that publisher should give you something to be exclusive to them. Because what's your advantage to being exclusive to them? You don't have really something positive out of that as a composer. Because you put all your effort, all your quality into one library. And your chance to get synced and licensed is leaning on that connections from that one library. For example, if you are signed with 20 libraries, really 20 good libraries, then you have much, much more chance to get synced. But if that library is paying you something like a fee for being an exclusive composer, you got a monthly income, you can be maybe a full-time composer then, then it makes sense, but that fee should be appropriate like a monthly salary, something. And even then, maybe then they deduct that monthly fee from your future things. So my opinion is don't do it as long as they don't pay you a, an appropriate fee. I know that some people or some libraries try to take people exclusive on a contract, but it's nothing I would recommend to a beginner. I cannot see any, any positive out of it, excluding maybe money. And as a beginner, it's not really good. I would say so. Don't do it. Chuck was asking, do you produce any other genres in your sparse time? Yeah, I do television music. So it's not trailer music, it's simple background music. Sometimes just piano solo music, so a lot of tension stuff. You know, it doesn't have that climax like in trailer music. It's just have a climax like going a little bit up, down, up, down. So you have some kind of edit points. But trailer music is always building to final climax like a big mountain so doing television stuff is for me like resting a little bit because just aiming for the final climax is making me totally tired and it's kind of boring to me yeah so i like to do television 
stuff and piano stuff. I even sometimes do scores, but not that much, you know. I even joined a little bit the studio with, with Chunky XL in LA and looked behind his shoulder how to do scores. It was pretty interesting, but it's a hard working process. You need to work long hours to do your work as a film composer. And at the moment, I work really maybe six hours maximum a day or maybe sometimes just four. So I prefer that to do, <laughs> honestly. Chibi Composer. Um, I recently heard that it is bad to write for more than three publishers at the same time because trade editors might recognize your name published from different companies. Is that actually bad? Why should it? I don't see something negative from that. Um, it just means if you work for a lot of publishers that your music is really good and that you are highly frequented by publishers. I mean, I hear that some publishers saying, oh, that's not good if you write for other publishers, but maybe it's just they want to have you choose for them alone. So I really don't care that trailer cutters or editors care about for how many companies you are working. I, I don't really think that's a point for them. They don't have time for that, you know. They need to cut trailers. I mean, if you beef on the internet and they see you on social media, you are beefing all the time, maybe they try to avoid you because you maybe, I'm not saying, I'm not sure how to say in English, maybe you are um, a jackass guy or something, speeding bad vibes. So definitely avoid that kind of stuff on the internet. I uh, see a lot of people speeding bad vibes on the internet. So that should be something you should avoid. I mean, if you're in a discussion, discussion, that's okay. But don't tell bad stuff to other people. The internet doesn't forget anything, you know. I had to learn it by myself. I also had <laughs> recognizable discussions on the internet. Some people still maybe remind, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Honestly, I really enjoyed talking to you and I'm going to do more streams in the future. Just give me a thumb on Facebook or on YouTube or here on Twitter. What would be the next topic you would like to see? And I try to set it up with a better setup, even maybe in better, Engl in better English. I cannot do anything about my German accent. It's just simply harsh, I know. But I try my best and try to give you really good feedback in my honest opinion. It's just my opinion. A lot of people might have another uh, different opinion, but it's just the kind of working flow it's working for me. And I got a feeling it's going pretty good at the moment and the last few years for me. So I'm always good in work and yeah, that's what I would like to share to you to speed positive vibes. We are supporting Wild, yeah, thanks. I just leave my donate PayPal kind of things here. So if you want to donate something, you are free, but you don't need to. I'm also on Patreon and giving courses on Patreon. So let me copy you that link shortly. And I explain a little bit about that. So you can see that's my Patreon link. And I'll show you shortly the site. Now we got more topics than stamps, but let's do it right now. You see, um, basically, um, Patreon is something for me to offer a service. So I'm doing coaching service as a composer. So let me check the tiers. Where can I find the tiers? You can see it here. So tiers. Here we got it. So you get different options to choose, um, whether it's just maybe getting free music for me as a friendly beginner for one euro per month. As a starter, you get one existing album from me for free for three euro, that's pretty cheap. New pictures from me from behind the scenes. Then you get the super supporter, you get the complete poster sheaf. I just post some stuff exclusive on Patreon, nowhere else. So it definitely makes sense to join it even just one for one euro per month. You get one hour personal chat with me on Skype on FaceTime. And I'm gonna add the option that you can see a live screen capture of my Cubase in it. So we can do a Skype FaceTime chat personally, or we do it like that in a private um, 
um, a private um, stream, then just for me and you here, the stream is now public. Oh, wait, I need to make a bigger, bigger screen. Let's do it like that. So we see we got a different screen. We got the friendly beginner for one euro for one track. Three euro per month, you get one album for free, pictures behind the scenes. 10 euro per month, you get uh, one hour personal chat with me per month with Skype, FaceTime and DAW screen. We could work one hour on your track. You can request, you get one album for free. Then you get a mega supporter for 30 euro per month. You get two hours personal chat DOE screen, DAW screen with me, two existing albums for free. The 40 hour per month, the 40 euro per month, you get two hours a free Patreon mug I have here. Maybe I'm gonna do something like a free mug sent out for the people who are gonna join me here on Twitch. Then we got the 100 euro per month for the more advantage composer. It's four hours uh, chat per month. And it's mostly done for people who want to join a private DLW a screen capture. I'm sorry. Uh, like this, you can see me working in Cubase and we can Skype. I got, uh, I can hear you, I can see you and can show you some tricks, but just you and me, no other people in a private um, stream. Then we got the ultimate, ultimate tier of infinity bundle. Thank you again for GW Composer for joining that. So we are working to, together eight hours a month on your personal career. If it should be business talks, briefings you got, you want to work me with you in my DAW and screen capture of that. And so it's just more private than in that open stream we got here. You see, so Sinister is saying, you fall, you then we can fix. What do you mean with that? I don't understand. What's that? You fall, you then we can fix. I'm not sure. Hey, Sinister, are you still here? Microphone is still working, yeah. So yeah, people, I would say I got one question over. So if you got something still to topic, just let me know and then it's time to go maybe to bed. It's already a two hour screen, so yeah. So Sinister, what did you mean with you? F I fall you, then we can fix. You mean you follow me? Where is later? I just mean, what do you mean with I fall you, then we can fix? What does that mean? Ah, okay. Got you later. Okay, guys. I think that was a great first stream. I need to finish now, definitely, because I don't have any more voice. I'm not used to speaking really so long. So um, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook, follow me here on Twitch, follow me on Instagram. You can see everything here on that ending point. I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, one last question. How do you manage trust levels for writing for deadlines? Do you feel the need to constantly write an internal project? GW Composer. Uh, Really appreciate the questions, but I would say we do that in a different topic, but this, this really takes a lot of time. Or we do it in a one-to-one -one session then in the future. We still got a lot of time over. Or maybe I'm going to do the topic solely just on uh, Twitch then. Okay? Hope you understand and thank you for the question. So popular. I really enjoyed the streaming day, two hours today with you. And I try to do it better and the next time with a better setup. And yeah. Just keep the heads up, follow me everywhere, donate if you want to, but you don't need to donate. And yeah, hope to see you soon and wish you a great day, nice evening, nice morning, nice afternoon, nice lunch. And it was great to see you and hope to see you soon again and take care. Bye bye.